Compiling for embedded devices uh, is sometimes cumbersome and complicated. You have to install tool chains, you have to set up a specific configuration in your machine, and then when you're switching to another piece of hardware, you have to redo all again. Uh, so actually, we have a solution for you. Ogos here is with me on the IT Show today to talk about IoTZ, which is a great tool, command line tool, that will solve all your problems when it comes to compiling for embedded devices. This is the uh, IoT Show, I'm Olivier, your host, and uh, as you just heard, we're going to talk about IoTZ, which is a tool that Ogus here has been developing and is going to talk to us about. So, Ogus, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Can you, for our audience, introduce yourself real quick and tell them what you're doing at Microsoft, and then we'll talk about your project. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Oz. Uh, I work at Microsoft as a software engineer. And uh, well, uh, today here I'm going to uh, talk about IoTZ. Uh, yet another, <laughs> you, don't like, you don't like this. I don't like the yet another uh, term, but <laughs> yeah. But, okay. but yeah. So yet another uh, approach for um, IoT compiler tool yeah. chains. So before we get into what IoTZ is, is exactly, um, Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm curious for you to share a bit about how you came to develop that tool, right? Because you're part of a team that is developing uh, a protocol, IoT Central. Yeah. And IoT Central is a SaaS solution for IoT that allows you to very easily create IoT apps without having to write code. Exactly. But to these solutions, there's always a, a, a part of it that is not that simple, which is the device side of things. Yes. Uh, yes. So devices, microcontrollers, you program using C, C++ code and, and esoteric kind of tool chains that come from here and there. Yeah. And so basically, how did you come to create IoTZ? What was the need for that? So uh, our solution, uh, at the end of the day, uh, customers are going to connect to our solution from their devices, right? Yeah. So there are, mul there are so many devices, so many tool chains targeting those devices. Uh, actually, then, uh, and uh, each, each one of them requires an additional learning curve. Okay. Uh, and uh, my few months ago, my task was to develop uh, a custom example uh, for a few of those devices, and I ended up uh, like realizing, hey, uh, what I'm doing here? Most of the time, I, the, 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 most of my time, I'm spending on how to do to things for those particular devices instead of actually uh, doing my job. Okay. So I ended up uh, combining the scripts I'm using to compile application for devices, and eventually. I would. I wanted to uh, make it as a solution so anyone else uh, can use it uh, to compile uh, applications for uh, varying IoT targets. Got it. So we'll get into the the, the weeds of, of what actually it looks like and does. But in a nutshell, what you're saying is that you have now a tool that, yeah. as you'll see, as you'll see, is pretty simple to install and to use, yeah. that aims at allowing you to compile for various types of targets yes. a piece of code, right? So you yeah. develop your code once, yeah. and then you say, I want to run that code on a device that is running that kind of CPU and, and so forth, and then just leverage, and we'll see in the background, uh, you know, containers yes. for having the actual compilers and tool chain implement the compilation for these targets, right? Yeah, actually, you pointed out a really uh, Im important part here about containers. So uh, the thing is, I, w I was working with different tool chains, mm -hmm. right? And the individual tool chains uh, require, uh, they, they have dependencies not playing well with each other on the same oh. system. Okay. So I ended up uh, installing those tool chains in, in, inside the containers, and I thought, okay, so I, do, I wouldn't like to make my, uh, make my OS trash mm. because of these requirements, dependencies, etc. Okay. Uh, so why, why, why am I not uh, benefiting from the containers mm -hmm. as many other people right now yeah. today uh, benefit doing that? For example, how people cross compile for Raspberry Pi. Like this is this is definitely not a new, new approach. Yeah, but yeah. what what we did here is uh, use this approach, turn that approach into a, a t basic tool so everybody can benefit from that, okay. uh, targeting these platforms. So basically, at the end of the day, you have the containers in the back that actually each contain the toolchain for a specific uh, for this big target. But 
then you abstract these tool chains using your tool yes. so that they can access it. Yes. I think I think seeing it will help people realize the power, how powerful the tool is, right? Indeed, indeed. Okay, let's let's You're see right what again. you can show me. You're right again. So okay, so uh, let's say we want to develop some very basic application for uh, MX chip. Okay. MX chip. So let's say. Uh, Let's create a basic application, Hello World kind of application okay. first. Uh, so you're using IoT Z Create. IoT Z Create, let's say, MX chip. Okay. And it will say extension MX chip is not found because this is this was intentional uh, because for example MX chip is I don't know if our viewers know that MX chip is. Uh, uh, one of the uh, Azure IoT dev, certified dev kits. Yeah. Dev, dev kits. Yep. Dev kits. So, but uh, MX chip is actually uh, a part of Arduino tool chain. Okay. Perfect, right? Uh, IoT Z create Arduino tool chain because it says okay. uh, extension mm -hmm. and MX chip, right? Okay, so it's one of the Arduino devices, so you need to have the tool chain before. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I'm saying this right now because, for example, uh, this tool is not just MX chip, etc. I could I could do it this way. Arduino Uno, okay. uh, my sample application here. Okay. Oh, and it's done too. Okay. So, so what did what what happened there? So you created a uh, a a workspace and environment. This is this is basically it. Just created, for example, let's focus on the sample application we created okay. for Arduino yeah. Uno, and let's see what. What's the cont uh, what's inside the folder? Okay. So it's it's just two files. One of them is sample application .ino, which okay. is the entry point for the Arduino applications. Okay. And inside the sample application .ino, uh, there is only the setup and loop with basic hello world uh, okay. printing so on the, the serial. Basic Nothing app. special. The basic yes. app for Arduino. Basic devices. app. But the more importantly, we have IoT Z JSON that is created by the tool, which is defining the target properly. Arduino AVR, you know. Okay. Actually, this is a, for example. Let's go back to and see what's for MX. What was for MX chip sample? Okay. And it was AZ thirty one sixty six as STM thirty two F four. This is kind of a thing. As long as you are not using the IDE for Arduino, you don't know this kind of stuff. And if, when you want to do this stuff uh, from the command line, yeah. for example, you want to connect your CI, you want to connect to another tool chain. Mm -hmm. Uh, finding this definition is so hard, yeah. but I just entered IoT Z Create uh, Arduino MX chip, and that was fine. It got it. It grabbed me the right uh, target for. So now you have a workspace that is ready for yeah. compiling for that very chip. Yeah. For that very board story uh, in, the, in the Arduino family, leveraging the Arduino yeah, exactly. uh, toolchain. Exactly. Exactly. Let's delete the. But you've not sample. installed the Arduino toolchain on your machine. Yes. Right? Not so yet. Basically, yes. not yet. It's yes. gonna work with. It's gonna work with containers. Yes. Okay. So I just deleted the you know sample, and I'm okay. going to focus on the Arduino MX chip example right okay. now. And uh, at, at, the, at the very moment, I don't have anything. For example, let's uh, view the Docker images here. Mm -hmm. So these are my Docker, Docker images at my system yep. currently. And uh, when I say IoT Z init here, it's going to initialize because the initialize this port, which mm -hmm. is set by IoT Z.json, which is okay. created during the create, create process. Okay. And let's run another window right now let's create another window and say docker images again okay so as you might see this is a newly created image mm -hmm. and this image is specific to this 18835119 okay. is the inode number for this particular folder sample folder okay so this that image is going to be only used for this particular sample project okay so which is going to be, for example, you can, uh, during the creation of the image, you can say, I want this project image uh, is to have these tools, that tools, additional these tools. So you basically create your own tool chain configuration for that very project. Project, right. automatically. Okay. So the next step is to actually uh, compile this sample application, okay. which is just IoTZ compile also. So basically, uh, you didn't do that, but IoT Z is a node tool, right? So you need to have node installed. You do npm yes. install IoT Z. Yes. Tool comes in. You create a new project. Yes, exactly. And then it basically, and you do the init, and it's going to basically bring everything you need yeah. to make it 
compile for yeah. that target. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and I think people are getting done. crazy here. They're just like, oh, you don't hear them from here. But uh, they, that's that's something that is huge. Actually, actually, develop, actually, developers don't like this kind of automatic tools. They they want to control the individual agreed, details. Agreed. Agreed. Right? However, you're kind of like sorting like big problems yeah. out here. You just really but we give them. We give them also. By the way, this build is ready. Let's see our. Uh, binaries here. So the, one of the good things about this one is normally when you compile MXGIF with any tool chain, the boat loader is not actually the part of the binary. So we have a binary here right now is which is including the boot loader too, which is like I just I can just uh, drag this uh, binary and drop into the MX chip okay. uh, board right now and okay. it, will, it will just work. It will just work. The second thing is I could just say... But that's an artifact, uh, sorry for the interruption, that's an artifact of your uh, toolchain image that you created that people are actually um, uh, getting these containers when they're initializing their project. The fact that there's a binary for the MX chip board is because you prepared that container that will do that for them, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That container is right now specialized for uh, this development. So ev everything sense. is inside. Okay. So the next thing is we can just say IoTZ export if you would like to play with make file tools, etc. Okay. And right now we have uh, here I a make file that we can use to make this project. If you want to go into details, make some changes, okay. uh, we are free to do that as well. So okay. if, if people don't like automated stuff, well, here another option. They can customize and do it themselves. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah, so basically install IoTZ, create a new project, initialize to bring all the tooling, all, yeah. all the containers, actually not the tooling, all the containers, yes. and then compile. Yes, only, you only need uh, probably one of the latest Node.js and Docker. Okay, Docker. okay. Yeah. that's awesome. So how many, at this point, how many boards, how many platforms, how many tool chains do we support? Yeah, it's kept increasing. It was a couple of weeks ago, it was uh, more than 400. Right now, I guess it's, uh, it's beyond uh, five to 600. Five to 600 yes. different boards yes. of different families, right? Yes. So yes. Arduino yes. and then other families, right? Subboards, like sub yeah, okay. subboards, yes. Um, and I think last but not least, all of that is open source. Yes. Meaning exactly. that if someone wants to add support for a new board yes. that is not in list, they can do that, right? They don't even have to come to us. Okay. They can just are a uh, way of, like there's a really a detailed documentation on the GitHub repository right now. Okay. You can go and check it and uh, publish your uh, extension to NPM without even asking us, coming us, dealing with anything, uh, the, our code review. We don't need to do anything. Just go and so create your extension. Basically, there, there, there will be a, a separate NPM package yes, that actually will exactly. work along with IoTZ. Exactly, exactly, okay. exactly. Pretty straightforward. Exactly, yes. There oh. is no, we, we, it's just, it's just go do it. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously that's a great demo of IoTZ. Hopefully. <laughs> no, it is, it is definitely. I think people will get excited about that. We'll add the link to the repo so that people can get the documentation ah, yeah. and give it a try. And uh, well, next time you have something as cool as that, because that is super cool, uh, or maybe the next iteration of IoTZ, uh, we hope to see you on the IoT show again. Hopefully. Yep. It was it was a pleasure. Well, thanks, August, and Thank I you. hope to see you soon. Thank you guys for watching the IT show, and don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.